This is the real life of James CD. And I happen to be the real James CD. Hello, welcome to a daily vlog. And when I say daily, I'm trying here. I'm trying, okay? Uh, this is the first vlog I've done in a while, unless you count my Patreon thing as a vlog. So, today is January... It's not. It's February. February 3rd. And, uh, there's been some things going on. Obviously, the big news that is going to be following me for a while is that I no longer work for Gamefront. Um, so it has been quite a week this past seven days. When I, when I first stopped working at Gamefront, I was traveling. I did a, an improv show in Miami, and it, it was difficult to really wrap my head around it while I was on the road, because I was like, what in the hell am I going to do? Um, and I started a Patreon, which is doing pretty well. Um, as a little bit better than I expected it to do. I'm crossing my fingers that it gets even better. But what's what's going on is uh, after putting it up there, I had somebody say, hey, James, why don't you get a real job? And that's kind of what I wanted to make the topic today about. Um, because I think it's important to justify that. Why don't I get a real job? Well, there's a couple things. First off, I'm not afraid to get a real job. I'm, I'm thinking about doing it. Uh, I was really surprised when my girlfriend told me, um, Aaron said, you don't, because my first instinct was, oh, I don't care, I'll just work at a coffee shop, one of my favorite jobs I've ever had. And she was like, you don't want to do that, don't do it yet. Wait until you have to make that choice. Because I have, uh, I have an agent, and I do a lot of commercial auditions. I've been doing improv for a long time, and I'm pretty good at improv, but the translation to film is not as easy as you'd think. But I've gone on over 100 auditions. I've had probably 30 or 40 callbacks. And I feel like I'm close. Like, And it really would only take me two commercials a year, depending on the commercial. I mean, I'm, I'm SAG eligible. So if I catch a SAG commercial, I will get probably, and it's these numbers are hard for me to even understand because they're huge. But I'm thinking probably like 20 grand if I booked a SAG national commercial. But... Uh, I'm also only SAG eligible, which puts me in the advantage of being able to do non-union things. Non-union, you're always going to get paid less for, but there's a lot more work for it. And for instance, I can't really say what it was for, but I had an audition just yesterday, and if I would get this, it would be three days of shooting, and I'd make about eight grand. And there was a lot of people auditioning for it. I did a good job, but they were looking for a George Clooney type character, and I don't think I really have that. So if I was to get that, that's eight grand. That would that would definitely be enough for me to hold off on. Realistically, I was making about a little over twenty five thousand dollars with my teaching with Gamefront with things a year. Which, in the big scheme of things, that's really nothing, especially living in L.A. One day I'll give you a tour of my apartment, um, which is not. It wouldn't take long. I could do it in a second just by sprinting. I can with three leaps make it across. And I'm not trying to get pity because I've got it made. I live two blocks from the ocean. I could go somewhere that's cheaper and live there, but there's an opportunity cost um, that that was involved. Like if I lived out in the middle of uh, the Midwest, which is a wonderful place, I wouldn't probably be able to go on so many auditions. So I would have to get a job at like a coffee shop, and that would be uh, pretty much my limit. And so here's the other thing. So. One reason I don't get a job is it would be impossible for me to make the auditions, even waiting tables. Like, my agent is, is not forgiving when it comes to uh, missing an audition. I got into quite a bit of trouble with him for, like, for instance, the game front gauntlets on Wednesdays that go noon to 2, I told him that was the one day I couldn't do auditions, and it didn't work like that. He got really upset, threatened to stop representing me so if I and I haven't gotten him any work so it's really hard for me to be like listen you just gotta listen to me uh, if I was booking gigs then he gets paid then I get paid um, and then I'm sure he would be more lenient so until I do that I can't ask for any any give on the scheduling of stuff um, so the other thing is is for the past for the past about 10 years of my life I've been working in a very strange uh, hold on the car is passing it's a damn tank down the street um, 
So for the past four years, I've worked for Gamefront, which is tough to put on a resume and explain to somebody what exactly I did. I can say video producer, I can say content creator, social media maybe, but all of those things would be difficult for me to get a job in what I was trained to do, which <laughs> is shooting coffee into an espresso thing. I did that before... Okay, so let me, let me break it down further. Before that, I worked at Activision and Treyarch for about, I'd say, it's hard to tell, maybe five years? Because I worked on, and I'm keep this between you and I, I'm not going to disclose any information, but they're pretty strict on stuff. So the last project I worked on was Call of Duty Black Ops, and I worked on that for about nine months. Before that, I was on Blur, the racing game from Activision, and that game had actually gone on hiatus, so before I worked on Blur, I also worked on Blur. And before that, I was exclusively Guitar Hero. I worked on all the different Guitar Hero stuff from Guitar Hero 3 DLC to Guitar Hero Metallica to Guitar Hero World Tour. Uh, I did the DS versions of Guitar Hero. So that is my experience, and I could go back to game testing. But the truth is, is I wouldn't wish that on an enemy. A lot less on myself again. It was a it was a difficult task. It's not something I, I am passionate about is being a game tester. I enjoy playing games and being a tester kind of took the magic of gaming out, uh, which was completely reinstilled by Gamefront, which is the difference. Like working for Gamefront made it so that not only did I get paid and play video games, but it gave me a new kind of enjoyment, an enjoyment that allowed me to share it with other people. I'm a social person. Um, so luckily, if I probably if I didn't work at Gamefront, I may have stopped being a gamer. I don't know. It's a it's a dimension that we'll never I'll never be able to experience. So before that though, I worked at a coffee shop for about twelve years. Um, the last one I worked was at 18th Street Broadway in Santa Monica, which was a very nice coffee shop. They paid me well, and I got great tips because it was a fancy area. But I had only worked there for about a year, and before that, I was at the coffee bean for years to the point where I was a supervisor I was the only uh, I was basically assistant manager to no manager because there they just didn't have one there and I had worked at the same coffee shop for about 10 years and I loved the job and I'd do it again money's not great but it's really not that much different than I've been making the difference is that when you are scheduled for a shift you have to be there period and I feel like while it's risky for me to take that job might be shooting myself in the foot because I've already gone on so many auditions and not gotten it and gotten callbacks and not gotten it that eventually it's just got to work. I know that I'm getting better at auditioning because what I do on stage can't be replicated. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a veteran improviser. I can do really well with almost anybody in almost any situation. But being in front of a camera is a little bit different because they want you to be small. They don't want big movements. The last thing they want is you to go like this because they say it doesn't fit on camera. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm working on that. It's something that I think I've put too much work into to stop now. And I realize with money that I have saved that I can probably make it until April. <laughs> without going to the coffee shop which if i did have to get a regular job i wouldn't it wouldn't hurt me the only thing is it would be a setback on this other stuff that i've been working hard at um so i'm hoping that i can land if i land two commercial gigs i can live off of that period even if it's non-union gigs uh additionally i do also teach i teach improv at the west side comedy theater but realistically that makes me 300 dollars a month because i only teach once a week and that's pretty good pay considering you're only working three hours a week. And it's nice. I might be able to pick up an extra class. I'm going to try. But the community is really strong there, and they don't, want, they don't necessarily want one person to be teaching all the classes. They want to spread that wealth to the people that work really hard uh, and, and craft their skill. So it wouldn't be fair just because James Heaney lost a job to let him start teaching all the classes at the West Side. And I would never ask that of them. If they have extra ones, I would gobble it up in a second. Uh, two classes a month would pay my rent. Almost. Almost pay my rent. Um, and I also coach an improv team. And that's once a week, and I get paid $50 to coach that team. Uh, they're a really great team. I mean, sure, I could say, you know what, guys, I think we need to start rehearsing twice a week. Uh, no, not because of me, because you need more rehearsal. That wouldn't be fair either. Um... 
But so those things together, if I just keep pushing all the stuff together, I should be able to just maintain my financial stability until I get some commercial gigs. And at that point, it would be really sweet. Now, I hope that this kind of sheds some light because I don't think, I don't want anybody to think I'm too good to work at a coffee shop because that's not true. The coffee shop is one of my favorite places I've ever worked. You get a chance to talk to people. You get a chance to, I, I got a chance to be artistic making latte art. I'm going to have to search through my old phones for pictures because I used to snap them. But unfortunately, all the old phones used to have really like 1.3 megapixel cameras. So I don't know how good that's going to be. Uh, what else do I want to say on that topic? I mean, you know what? Next time uh, that I have a, a, a lack of what to talk about, I'll tell you about the jobs I've had. Because I did have jobs before I was a coffee shop person, and they were pretty cool. I'm not afraid of getting my hands dirty, but I do want to try to be as successful as I can. And I think going to a coffee shop right now, while it's something that I'll always be willing to do, I don't know that that's the path to me being as successful as I can. Uh, this is probably not the funniest of the vlogs, but they're not all going to be funny. Transparency here. There will be some that are funny and there will be some that are not. If you don't want to support the honesty that I promised to bring you, then, then this is probably not the channel for you to support. But, uh, let's see. Oh, it's beautiful out here. I'm in the Santa Monica Mountains right now and the moon is setting. Yeah, so anyways just in case you were uh, not believing me, it's the honest truth. Goodbye. Thank you. This is the real life of James CD. And I happen to be the real James CD. This is vicious.